Chapter 7.777 The Black Pond We all rolled around on the grass, just beyond the black marble that surrounded the water. The Black Pond, said Skye in a loud voice. Oh, I love it here. We do too, yelled Frank and Minnow, both beaming. Shh, whispered Jax, pointing at Blizzard. He was still a little boy huddled by himself right next to the edge of the black pond. Angel was sitting next to him, her wings wrapped around his shoulders. We all settled down, still elated from our journey but feeling sad for Blizzard. We're only here for a little while, whispered Jax, but we need to catch our breath so that we can keep going. Can't we just stay here? asked Minnow. This isn't our time, said Jax. It's the same black pond as some of us had visited, but it's years before. Time isn't stable here for us. Also, whispered Solo, healing's a private thing. I nodded. Poor Blizzard, I said. Poor, asked Jax. Why? He was treated so badly. Jax pulled a face. He has a friend who was willing to lose the use of his legs, for 1,100 years. I think that's pretty good. I nodded. True, I said. It's amazing, said Minnow. Unbelievable, said Skye. Jax threw an arm around her. Come on, you future time pirate, she said. You were pretty stunning yourself. Skye laughed. I guess so. I know so, said Jax. Now, We need to head back to the future ourselves, Sky grinned. When I grow up, I'm going to see every movie ever made about time travel. Jax breathed in deeply. When you're a time pirate, she said, you can waste as much time as you like watching movies and still have a gazillion years to spend on everything else you want to get done. Sky looked pleased. I can't wait. Chapter 7.7777 Blizzard and the Black Pond Still written by Ben in black ink Come on, said Jax. Say goodbye to Blizzard. We really must go. It's not stable here for us. Blizzard had his head on his knees. He no longer had a blindfold on, but when he looked up, I could tell that he couldn't see us. He looked so unhappy. It nearly made me cry. Angel wasn't saying anything, nor did she look at us. It was as if we weren't there. She knows we're here, said Jax, but all her energy needs to focus on Blizzard. This is his hour of need. Frank nodded, looking serious. I want to say goodbye, he said. Me too, I said. Jax gestured towards Blizzard, as if to say, please do. Frank and I knelt down next to our dear friend. I'm so sorry, whispered Frank. I wish I could have taken some of the punishments. Same, I said. Blizzard shifted his legs and then he looked towards us, his sad, blind eyes trying to focus. No, you don't, he said. We both frowned. I do, actually, I said. Me too, said Frank. I wouldn't want you to whispered Blizzard. The fact that you care is enough. Frank's eyes filled with tears and so did mine. Of course we care, I said. Blizzard put his head back onto his knees and nodded. But it was the nod of someone who's too tired to do anything. It was the nod of someone who wants to give up. I put my hand on Blizzard's back. Frank did the same. If we can ever do anything, I whispered, Even the smallest thing, please tell us. When we're back at Mareskamar, you'll be a man again. But if you ever want anything, please ask. We felt Blizzard sigh, and it almost broke my heart. To know that your hero has been through the worst, and to know that you can't stop any of it. We hated that. Chapter 8. Magal the Boy With a loud clatter... Magal arrived at the black pond in his rusted-up wheelchair. As I stared at Magal the boy, I could see the wild, giant angel man that he would become. 
His eyes looked a bit crazy and his mouth was curved into a silly grin. Go on, he said to Angel. Go home. Why would any one stay here if they had anywhere else to go? Angel smiled at Magal, her face filled with light. Because you and Blizzard are both marvellous, she said. That's why. Then she looked at all of us and added, but you lot had better go with Jax. The last thing I need is for any of you to get stuck in time. Sky looked worried, but found her courage as she watched Jem and Six fly towards her. We'll never get stuck in time, she said, and look, Jem and Six are back, and this time they can stay, because I'm no longer splintered. Angel grinned. They'll come and go, she said, just like you'll come and go for Stella. All of our inner children are always with us, in the happy memories and the sad ones. And we have to be there for them, said Magal, looking grim in his wheelchair, but he was still smiling. Sky and I beamed at him. What a hero, I thought. What an absolute hero.